All right, and we are back. Last lecture, we got real acquainted with this lovely graph that growth marketers dream about at night, and I've heard stitch into their bed pillows. It's just a rumor, and like most rumors, is 100% true. Okay, so we get it. New businesses need short-term manual strategies to start feeding the gears of feedback that will allow you to progressively expand your growth efforts with more confidence. But there's one more thing we need to talk about lest you finish the rest of the course with exploded brain syndrome. In all growth strategies, there are two components that make it work. Number one component, you have something that attracts attention. And number two component, you have something that converts that attention into sales or conversions. You have the honey that attracts the bees or the milkshakes that bring the boys to the yard. And then you have whatever the bees drown in because how I understand it, that's how beekeeping works. And then you have whatever convinces the boys to drink the milkshake, which is a metaphor we are no longer going to explore. Basically, it is the world's simplest jigsaw puzzle. Everything we cover in this course and everything you do in an attempt to buy some customers will need both components to work effectively. Presumably, you sell something on your website or through some web property you control or even through a platform where you host your business. If you want to sell something, first we need to get people to our page and then we need to make our page in a way that actually then gives them what they want. If we say we're pursuing a content strategy, we would need to make something and then promote it. The promotion could be community posting, it could be borrowing traffic from platforms, buying ads, targeting blogs. There's a million different ways you can get eyeballs on it. Once the user sees the post, then it's the post job as the second part of this formula to convince the user to either buy something you're selling, do something like give you their email address or follow your brand in the future. Oftentimes this piece is the endpoint and it tries to convert the user. Sometimes it's just a link in the chain and it's used in tandem with say, email marketing. So get used to thinking about growth strategies as always two distinct actions. Throughout the course, this is also how we're going to be explaining these. In the next couple of lectures, we'll go over how to check that your site is ready for sales. And if it is, then well, that dramatically simplifies that second process. We're gonna talk specifically about optimization. And specifically, we're gonna answer the question of, uh, is your page ready if you send traffic to it to let customers buy your product or your service in a relatively easy way. Now, shocker, if your site isn't ready from a functional sense, it can't collect payment, then you're not gonna obviously be successful. It doesn't matter how much traffic you send to your page, obviously they can't pay you. Therefore, all of your marketing efforts are going to be a waste. Now, a little bit further than that, if your page isn't optimized in at least a minimal uh, regard, you're also gonna run into problems. You're gonna run into what I call the illusion of a failed campaign. What I mean by that is, let's say you're building out your marketing strategy, you picked your channels, you get out there and you start running them and people are responding in a positive way. They like what you're saying, they like your marketing message. They're clearly resonating with the way that you're pitching to them. But then as soon as they get to your website, nothing seems to happen. Now, if that happened to you, you would just assume that you misread the situation and that they don't like what you are saying or you're gathering or collecting the wrong people. Now, I call that an illusion because you might think that you scored yourself a win and you learned something, but in reality, there's no way you could know whether or not it's because your page makes no sense and it just encourages people to leave or you used a ineffective marketing technique. Now, if your site is already set up and you've taken sales and you're reasonably confident that your site makes sense, please skip this lecture. Do not watch it. I do not wanna hear you complain about me talking about things you already know. This is just a quick pit stop for those of you out there that wanna make a quick audit of your website to make sure that it is at least set up in a way that you can be successful. If your site is not set up in a way that one, users can understand, two, easily and in an effective way conveys the benefits of your product or service, and three, allows users to easily pay you, your site is just going to be a dud. So for our audit, we're gonna go over those three things. Can your users understand your site? Can they figure out the benefits of your service relatively quickly? And can they pay you? All right, let's look at a website for as an example that makes sense. I'm sure you guys have heard of this one. This in general makes sense. I see where I sign up. I see what they are claiming it does. I can scroll down and see what the features are and why they are benefits. And if I wanna learn more, that's great. It's very simple. 
Uh, and again, areas where I can go the next step if I am interested. Now let's look at one that makes absolutely no sense. Oh, I've used this one before because it's just so weird. Poker Coach 2. Uh, can anyone tell what this is? I mean, I can kind of guess from the name, but challenge Poker Snowy now with live real-time advice. Who is Poker Snowy? And get it now. What do I get? And how is that 20% off? What is that man at the bottom telling me? I just want to leave because I'm confused. Now, which one of those two are you? Most likely you're somewhere in the middle, but you can still stand to improve. Now, if you look like Poker Snowy, well then, thank God you watched this lecture. Now, to get from Poker Snowy to Dropbox, there's two things I want you to do. They're quick and easy. All right, grab a Word document, piece of paper, or anything you can write something down on, and in one sentence, actually do this, I want you to do this, uh, write down what exactly your product or service is and does. Now, if I were selling an iPhone cover, I would say it's a rubber cover that protects your iPhone. It is a rubber cover and it protects your iPhone. That's what the does is and what the is is. All right, now that you have that done, I want you to look at your home page with that in mind. In two seconds, two to three seconds, can you tell what exactly your page does? Can you tell that it does that sentence that you just wrote down? If users cannot immediately tell what the point of the page is, or at least what the general topic is, you're always going to have people leave in droves. Now, the second thing you can do is ask a friend, literally anyone, say, hey, look at my webpage and do not tell them what it is. Don't tell them what it does. And then just ask them immediately, can you tell what this page is or what it's for? If they can figure it out relatively easy and they're not giving you an answer that's completely wrong, then good job. But if they can't, you really need to work on your clutter and or your organization. Uh, you can actually use a tool. You can check this one out. Bonus tip, 5secondtest.com. That's a great website. It's free. All you have to do is take a picture of your site, post it online, and in generally 30 minutes, you'll have people say what they think it does in five seconds. Now, the number two thing we need to do in our audit is check, does our page convey what the benefits of our product or service is? In a short period of time, can I see on the page why I should buy this and how this is going to benefit me. Now, it doesn't have to be the largest text in the world, but you need to have something on the page to convince them. You cannot just simply have a description of what it is and that is it. They need some persuasion. Now, if I was selling that iPhone case that we just talked about, and I just said iPhone case, no one would buy from me. Even if I just said iPhone case and I put a picture of a beautiful iPhone case, people still will probably not buy from me because they still need to hear what exactly it is and how it's going to cradle my iPhone like a newborn baby. And the last thing we need to check in our quick audit is can they pay you, right? If someone were happy, satisfied, you convince them that they are gonna pay you money, can they actually do it? I mean, literally, can they do it? Now, if you're not selling something, keep this in mind, uh, or you're doing a free service or something like that, well, your currency are, is probably gonna be email addresses. So the question then becomes, can they submit their email address to you? And is it not too arduous of a process to do that? Now, there's no excuse to not add payments nowadays. There's so many options for doing this. People don't wanna mail you cash and they don't wanna mail you checks or pay you in Bitcoin. They want the normal options for payment. In the next lecture, we're gonna demo adding a Stripe payment account just so I can show you how dead simple it is. You can do it in five minutes. Now, if you guys are on a platform like a Shopify or a WordPress or a Magento or a Drupal or any of those big bloated things, you might just have to Google it, right? They all support payments. You just need to figure out how exactly to do it. You just type in the name of your platform plus payments or credit cards, and they almost always will have a guide. And if all else fails, for some reason you cannot do that. If you are in the US, Canada, and Europe at least, this is a fallback technique you can do. Go to square.com, if you've ever seen Square before. They are a credit card processing company that's kind of democratized the process for everyone. Sign up for an account. You will get approved roughly in 24 hours, unless you're a terrorist organization. And then what you can do is download the application. Uh, then at that point, you can collect credit cards by manually typing them 
in. So if someone wants to pay you, just set it up such that they input the information, it looks encrypted, gets sent to you, and you can do it manually until later you can add a payment source or you can call them and do it over the phone. True story, for the first two years of running Sprint Kick, the web uh, studio that I run, that's actually how I collected payments. I called clients and said, this is how much is due, please just read me your credit card. People are actually fine with that because they assume a phone is actually more secure than a credit card page. It's not true at all. Phones are much less secure than a credit card page, but whatever, that's what people think. All right, so check your stuff over. If an idiot were to come to your page, can they figure out one, what you do, why they should buy it, and can they figure out how to pay you? If you don't meet those three, please fix it. Otherwise, the rest of this course is gonna be worthless for you. Now, in the next lecture, I'm gonna demo this. I'm gonna show you a really screwed up page, and I'm gonna show you how you can very quickly and easily convert it to one that is actually, uh, that actually passes that one, two, three audit test. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you a real live example. So we're gonna demo this on a page that I made actually for my MVP course, if you guys are following along with that. I'm gonna show you a bad version, and then we're gonna talk through how we can convert it into a good version following those three criteria. Remember, one, can they understand what it is? Uh, two, can they figure out why they should buy it or be interested in it? And three, can they pay you? Okay, let's go. All right, so this is the page right here. Now, everybody out there, let's look at the page and actually just read it. Read it to yourself and can you figure out what this is? Give yourself four or five seconds, I'll wait. Okay, we're back. Can anyone figure out what this is? Well, I'll tell you what it is. So this was actually in the MVP course. What it was, um, was a service where we could give gift baskets to Airbnb hosts. They could customize whatever they wanted and subscribe so that they got the same baskets over and over and over again based on how many guests they had and what the guest preferences were. The idea was that, you know, you host and you take five to 10 people in your home at a time. So why not have an application where you can create the gifts that you give to your guests and then, you know, in advance pick what you wanted to go in them, children getting toys and old couples getting wine. So this is a good example and a very plausible example of a site that to me could have made sense, right? Because I know what it does. And so I might think that this is all they need to know. Here's a picture, here's a headline, and here is a testimonial down at the bottom. But in reality, if I didn't know what it was, I would probably be clueless. So let's start at the top. This is the headline. And, and in this course, guys, we're gonna cover in depth making landing pages, how you can get good at making them. But at this point in this, the course, you don't need to be an expert, right? We just need to follow those three criteria. So the cheapest thank you you can give. First of all, grammatically, that's a little bit weird, you, you. Um, it also sounds kind of funny because think about it, the cheapest thank you you can give, doesn't that make you just sound like you're a cheap person, right? Aren't thank you supposed to be heartfelt and actually put effort into it? Whatever, that's totally a side. But what does that mean? Like I can understand I can connect the two. It's a gift of some sort, right? Giving a gift, cheapest thank you. Am I buying that? That That is the question I might ask because this this image is is kind of irrelevant. And then it says, give the gift of air basket to your Airbnb guests, they will thank you later. All right, great. So I figured out for Airbnb, yes, the air basket goes to them, but I don't know what the air basket necessarily is. I hope it's not that. And then let's see if maybe we can find another clue. We have a testimonial. Air basket has saved me in so many situations with my guests. They absolutely love receiving them and always thank me later. Uh, so what you can tell is they're buying something. I'm not sure why we would buy and I don't know what it is. So this is a great example. I mean, you'd have to be Sherlock Holmes to be able to put together the pieces to figure out what exactly this is. Even if I was interested, I would probably leave because I don't know what this is and I don't wanna waste my time trying to figure it out. Second, do we have any reason why we should buy it? I mean, it says cheap and it says they will thank you and this person said it was nice, but those aren't really reasons. How does this benefit me? Cheapest is not a benefit to me, um, I guess, save me in situations. I don't know what the situations are. This is very hard to kind of connect the two. And then if I wanna buy it, hit create basket, and it appears that it's just, let's see, a form, and then I hit create, and it just says thank you. Okay, how, how did I, how was I supposed to buy that? 
that fails on all three counts. Okay, so what we need to do is change this. We need to convert it into a way that it's actually easy to understand. So at home, actually think about this to yourself. How would you improve this given what you know it does? Well, the first thing I'm gonna suggest is that since you see the headline first, you should probably tackle that one first. Everyone reads the headline first. I mean, that's just a fact of uh, home pages, landing pages, and marketing in general. So the cheapest thing you can give, I would change that to something a little bit more specific. It's okay if it's vague, if you then explain right here what it is, because the second thing people read is gonna be this. So I can use something that piques their interest or I can explain it or give a little bit more of a clue, but then I have to explain it. This is the area where I explain dead simple what it is. And then I just simply would not use a testimonial. And if I used a testimonial, it would have to be something that is more specific. It'd have to say something like, you know, air basket, um, is a gift that my guests love. I love the fact that I can customize it and have it come at convenient times, you know, and that my guests can say it's personalized or something like that. It needs to have some of those features or benefits in it to make sense and to be somewhat convincing. And then, yeah, obviously the second thing is uh, because there's no benefits or clear benefits, I would straight up just change this and add a section that says how it works or why you should do it. Okay, so let's look at an actual version that after I've done that, I'm gonna focus on benefits, uh, focus on clarity, and I'm gonna make sure that you can pay for it. So here you go. Now, if you actually go to airbasket.co, you will see this version. So it says your guests will love you. <laughs> Again, vague doesn't necessarily say what it is, but the next sentence does. Give each of your guests a personalized welcome basket. Get, get baskets delivered on time for each guest for as little as $7 a basket. And then this image is much more specific, much more relevant. In one to two seconds, if you were to look at this and you didn't know what it does, you could figure this one out. And then benefits right here, why use Air Basket? Save time and effort, 200 items to choose from, enjoy bulk prices. There you go. And then I even went down farther and said how it works and you know other things that why you should uh, buy. We cover a lot of this later, when, again, when we talk about landing pages and Instapage, that's what we use. You guys can look forward to that later. Okay, so you guys can see the difference, right? Image is more relevant. There is a text that literally describes what it is, and then we literally describe why you should pay me money, okay? Now, the only thing that's left in our third, our three-piece audit is paying. Okay, now let me show you how easy it is to add payment. I can't cover every single base, guys, because if you're using Shopify, it's a different way. If you're using WordPress, it's a different way. If you're using a Squarespace, it's all basically different, but I'm gonna show you the simplest way to do it in a way, and this way it covers most bases. Just go to stripe.com. What they are, they um, allow you to take credit cards online, their competitor to PayPal. They are well known, why? Because they're extremely easy to use. Just create an account and you will be up and running in like two hours. I say two hours because you do have to have your account approved before you can take credit cards, but you can get it set up in the first five minutes. So set up an account and I'll see you inside. All right, and this is what the panel looks like. You know, it's gonna track all of your credit card transactions. You can add all sorts of cool stuff like subscriptions, coupons, plans. Uh, different products, you can make it like events, you can make it do all sorts of really cool stuff. Big fan of Stripe, always check it out. Uh, but now, how do, uh, how do we integrate this? Just go to documentation and right here, checkout. Just go to checkout, that is the button that you want. Uh, if you're doing PayPal, it's the same thing. I mean, they just give you a PayPal button. You just say you wanna take payments and they'll take you to a page. It just takes a lot longer with PayPal. So right here, shows you how to integrate it. It's actually really, really simple and they're very nice because I'm logged in, they've already input the code that I need for this to work. They put in my data key and my uh, data image and all that stuff. So I don't have to deal with that. Don't have to be technical in the slightest. All I need to know is I have to copy this and go to whatever you're using for your website. If it's custom, no problem. If you're using a platform, look for uh, the custom HTML editor. So the way that you would do this in Instapage is you just go up to add new. It's right there at HTML and you can add custom HTML. Wix does this, Weebly does this, WordPress does this, Shopify does this. Everyone who has a platform will allow you to insert custom HTML. And you know if you're doing a custom website and you work with a developer, just add them, ask them to add it in. It's like putting in your Google AdWords, or your Google Analytics little snippet. It takes three seconds. 
So you just double click in this case and I just copy right there, say done. Can't show me it yet because it has to be live, um, but you'll see in a second, now I have a button. So now I can just say preview and there you go. Look, I have a button right there. It says pay with card. I can click it and I can pay you money. You see how long that took me? Look, you can pay me. That's the that's actually the technical name of Sprint Kick. I put in my email, put in my credit card, pay $20 or whatever you set it up to be. No excuses, guys. That's how you can, in roughly five minutes, get a payment button in to pass your one, two, three audit. Okay, so we took an ugly, unfunctional page like this and we made it so that it actually makes sense like this. And then we added a payment button so we can pay. There you go. We're done with the audit, moving on, and hopefully you guys do the same. All right, see you in the next lecture.